We're here doing a major ecological restoration project where we're making some great strides today in the direction of bringing back the American chestnut tree to the eastern United States. So what we're doing is you go up in the lift, you get find the female flowers called the burrs, and we prepare them by clipping off the male catkins and put a protective bag around them so there is no open cross-pollination from other chestnuts in the area. We pollinated the first main wild chestnut trees ever that were pollinated with, with pollen that we created in our, in our greenhouse, in our lab, that has blight tolerance. So this pollen has an extra gene that allows it to withstand the this invasive fungal blight that has wiped out the entire, virtually the entire population of the American chestnut tree throughout its eastern range from Maine to Alabama and across to Indiana. We collected the fertile nuts, we tested them to see if they've inherited the gene for blight tolerance. Close to about 47.5% of them did, which is what, what you'd expect because of the genomics. And now we are beginning to grow those out in our greenhouse. And we've also exchanged our chestnut seeds that have the blight tolerance with our partners throughout the eastern United States. With partners like the University of New England, we're able to broaden everybody's horizon by working both interchapter and having the expertise of the university. So here in Cape Elizabeth, we have the first field experiment ever in New England where we are planting the American chestnut trees that have an extra gene for blight tolerance. So we know from lab experience that the extra gene protects the tree from the fungal blight. And now we need to see how, the, how it performs in more natural conditions. And this is the first time this has been attempted in New England. And so our Cape Elizabeth site is very important for the future of the American chestnut tree.